Hello, I'm Aaron, and I'm going to give you a quick overview of Vector. Here we have the Vector dashboard, which gives a simple overview of the clusters and nodes the Vector is monitoring. I favorited one of the key spaces in the system. From here, I can see an overview of the advice that we're giving and the performance of this key space. I can click to see which tables have the highest load, which tables have the highest read throughput or write throughput, and I can look at their latency, both for read and write, to understand where my application is spending most of its time. We put all this information together in a feature we call Focus Bubble. This allows us to focus on an aspect of table performance while understanding the importance of that table. Each bubble represents a table. Its position on the y-axis indicates the proportion of requests sent to the table. On the x-axis, it illustrates whether the table is receiving mostly reads or mostly writes. While the size of the bubble is dictated by the amount of data that it's storing. More data, bigger bubble. We then color code each bubble according to some aspect that we want to focus on. Here, we're looking at the read latency. Bubbles colored red have tables that are in the top 25 percentile for read latency. I can switch to look at write latency as well. Zooming out to our cluster, we can look at the advice that's at the heart of Vector. Vector gives advice that is categorized into areas such as configuration, performance, and security. And whether we think it is critical or recommended that you look at it. Let's look at some of the recommended advice. Here's one about the use of CQL collection types. Clicking on the detail, I can see a clear recommendation from data stacks that collection types only be used to denormalize a small amount of data. Together with this recommendation, we've got the background knowledge as to why we suggest this. Here, we've talked about the way that lists work in an update, the way that TTL is used, and the general design considerations and implementations of collections in Cassandra. Our advice also includes a fix, contextualized to the table that we're looking at. In this case, we're looking at a set. Our fix recommends how to move from using a set as a data type to having two different tables that achieve the same result. Our fix also explains how we can backfill the data and once complete, gives us the CQL statement, customized just for this table and column that we would use to drop the column. And that's it. Please go to www.datastacks.com for more information. Thanks.